I'm Dr. Michelle Jorgensen with Living Well with Dr. Michelle, and I am really excited to talk to you about the topic for this week. We are going to talk about how to get dinner from your fridge and your cupboards onto the table in 30 minutes and have everyone love what they're eating. Now, I don't know about you, but I have heard what's for dinner so many times over the last few weeks, but not only what's for dinner, but what's for breakfast, what's for lunch. It just seems to never end. We need three meals a day and uh, we're definitely using what's in the fridge, we're using what's in the cupboard and getting creative about it. So how do we do it in our home? I'm gonna teach you a formula that is usable anywhere for any meal in any home. But let me talk you through a little how we do it in our home. We rely a lot on leftovers, but we've relied on leftovers for years. What we've typically done is everything I make for dinner turns into lunch the next day, whether it be it's packaged up to go to school or whether it's remade something for lunch later. Uh, it doesn't really matter. We're just using the leftovers for something else. That's something we've done forever. Right now, not only are we packaging up the leftovers though, but we're actually turning it into other things. So we're gonna use the same formula and apply it to leftovers and make everything taste amazing. This also applies to what's in the fridge, what's in the cupboard. How do you use what you have to work? So let's talk through this formula right now. The first thing that I want you to think about is, is this gonna be a meat meal? or is this gonna be a grain meal? I'm gonna give you a really short background to that, not a whole long explanation because that's gonna be a whole other week all on its own, but in essence it relies or relates to food combining, the way that food processes in our stomach. When we eat something meat-based, it requires a lot of acidic juices to digest that food. When we eat something grain-based, it actually uses alkaline juices to digest that food. So if you eat something with meat, something with grain, and you put it in the same belly, you're competing the acidic juices actually balance out the alkaline juices and then nothing gets digested very well and it's been interesting because i've actually been violating this rule over the last few weeks we've just all been a little bit on survival mode and let's just make a meal let's make it delicious but we i haven't really been following this rule and i've noticed a lot of digestive change in myself so it'll be good to get back to this now so you choose, do you want a meat meal or do you want a grain meal? But ideally they are not the same thing. You don't have both in a meal for digestive purposes so that you're able to digest and get more out of that meal and feel, feel better after as well. That's the first thing you're gonna decide. So let's just check that one off the list, meat or grain. Next one is gonna be flavor profile. So you think, okay, what well, sounds good today? You know how this works because this is the same thing that works when you talk about going out to eat or whatever it might be. You know, what, what's gonna taste good? Oh, today maybe Mexican. So that's gonna be the flavor profile. You hear those words on food channel, but really all it means is what's your food gonna taste like? Then, then you're gonna decide, am I gonna make one of four things? In this formula, there's four things that you can always make. You can always make a salad, a soup, a stir fry, and a bowl. And we'll talk through those four, but you're gonna choose which one of those four things am I gonna make? After that, you're gonna to go to your vegetables. And when you think about flavor profile, it will often guide the vegetable choices you make. Or, in my case, what's in the fridge will often guide the vegetable choices I make, which will then guide the flavor profile. So a lot of this is based on what you have available as well. Then the last thing we have to consider or check off the list is do they have a salty component, an acid component, and a fat component. If your meals have those three things, they are going to be delicious. Isn't that interesting? That's all it takes, salt, an acid, and a fat to make everything delicious. So let's go through an example of that. What I have on hand right now, I'll just walk you through what my head did this morning in thinking about what we're gonna have for dinner. So I started thinking, what do I have on hand? All right, right now my greenhouse is starting to produce and I have a lot of bok choy. In fact, when I was out there just a couple of days ago, I saw that I have some bok choy that it's actually already going to seed. I don't wanna lose that harvest, so I need to use bok choy today. <laughs> that has to happen. I also have a bucket full of green onions that we pulled out when we were thinning some things and cleaning up the garden. So I have a bok choy, I have some green onions, I also have some radishes that are getting huge out in that greenhouse. So bok choy, green onions, radishes so far. I know in my fridge, I've got a half a carton of mushrooms. So already, when we're thinking about bok choy, green onions, radishes, and mushrooms, what is coming to your mind instantly? And you know, people will tell me all the time, oh, you're just creative. You can just think about what to do with this kind of food. That's not true. You've all eaten in a restaurant. You can all tell me when you go, let's say to an Asian restaurant, 
what typically you're gonna see on your plate. You can all tell me when you go to a Mexican restaurant what you're gonna see on a plate and on and on for every other kind of food profile. You've eaten these foods, you've seen these foods, you've been to a restaurant, you've ordered these foods, you know what's in these foods. So don't fall back on a, oh, I'm just not creative that way. No, 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 think about what you've eaten in a restaurant. So I think about those things and I think, wow, that sure sounds like a Chinese restaurant I've eaten at before, right? Some Asian greens, green onions, radishes, and mushrooms. That's an Asian meal all over the place. So now I'm gonna say, all right, am I gonna do a grain or a meat meal? Well, I already decided that I have some really nice whitefish that I wanna use in the freezer. So that means it's gonna be a meat meal. What that means is I can cross grains off the list. I don't need to do anything with that at all. So now my choices are, am I gonna make a salad, a soup, a stir fry, or a bowl out of this? I'm not gonna make a bowl because I'm not gonna have a grain in this meal. So pretty much it makes it a lot harder to do a bowl unless you do just greens as your bowl, which is great, but then you've really created a salad. So again, I'm down to salad, soup, and stir fry. Well, it's pretty obvious that I'm probably gonna go with either a salad or a stir fry for this one. I think I'll probably do a salad because fish doesn't work as well in a stir fry. It kind of falls apart in a stir fry, so I think I'm gonna do a salad. I think, okay, do I have greens? Can I make a salad? Yes, actually I have a greenhouse full of lettuce. Beautiful, we'll make a salad. So let's think about the vegetables we already know. We are gonna do a lettuce for the base of this salad. We're gonna add some bok choy, some radishes, some green onions, and some mushrooms. I like the bok choy cooked, so I'm gonna cook that a bit. And I like the mushrooms and the radishes cooked, actually, I like them both cooked. So I think I'm gonna combine all those together maybe and make a topping that will go together on top of that salad. Now we get to the fun part, we need to make it taste right. So you know about flavor profiles of Asian cooking, but let's go through our list, salt. So what could be salty that could be in our meal? Soy sauce, it's an easy one, right? Soy sauce is very salty, it's a great one to add. How about the acid component? Well, in a lot of Asian cooking, they use a vinegar. They use one that's called rice vinegar very often. It's a nice mild vinegar, gives a good Asian flavor, so that's a nice um, acid component. How about fat? Well, those vegetables that I'm gonna be cooking, I'm gonna be cooking in some sort of oil. I think I'll probably use an avocado oil. So when I combine those three things together, now I have those three flavor profiles. I may also do a little top dressing of some sesame oil because that gives a real Asian kick and that gives a little bit extra flavor and a little extra oil. So I have my salt, my acid, and my fat in that meal. So tonight we're gonna have a delicious Asian whitefish salad spread on top of greens with some Asian vegetables and a really nicely cooked whitefish, probably with a little bit of uh, sesame oil and soy sauce, maybe some of those green onions sprinkled over top and some sesame seeds on top. Again, think what you would have had in an Asian restaurant. They probably have some sesame seeds on top. Brings a little bit of a fat component to it, but it also makes it look good. So that's how you put the formula together. Now, can I do that in 30 minutes or less? Absolutely. That fish takes about 10 minutes to cook. Those vegetables, even including going to the greenhouse to get them, are gonna be maybe 15 minutes max. The salad, you're gonna tear it up under 30 minutes flat to the table and your family will rave about it because it's going to be delicious. I may actually throw in a few water chestnuts too. I remember I have a can of that right now in my pantry. So some water chestnuts added with a little bit of crunch gives it a little extra flavor. That's the formula, that's how it works. You can use this for leftovers, you can use this for what's in your kitchen, what's in your cupboards, you can use this for anything. So I encourage you to give it a try. I am making a guide this week as long as well as an ebook with a ton of recipes on how to use this formula. So make sure you click below to get that guide and to get that ebook with all of these recipes and that formula you can pop out on your kitchen counter and follow every time you're making a meal. Thank you so much. This is Dr. Michelle with Living Well with Dr. Michelle.